we have many elders, but not too many wise elders anymore. Yeah. And so really what we've lost in that is the ability for people like you or people like me or whoever to be able to help people with things like cannabis and go, hey, yeah, it's not bad or good. It's a tool, right? Yeah. But if you're trying to drive a screwdriver in with a hammer, it might not be the right tool, right? No, yeah. So have the awareness of when to choose this medicine, what it can do for you, but also understand the challenges that come along with it, right? Understand the fact that how you use it makes it what it is, yeah. right? It's big. My journey into cannabis started when I was 16, and I started experiencing what I would now call generalized anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, you know, doctors were recommending pharmaceuticals. My parents didn't really know what to do. And so I started trying these pharmaceuticals, and I found that they were horrible. Uh, they were yeah. making me feel like a fraction of my former self. And it almost felt like it was giving me a lobotomy, right? Yeah. Where, yeah, I wasn't anxious, but I wasn't alive either. No, right? I've heard that a thousand <laughs> times. Yeah, and so... You know, from there, at the same time, my friends were drinking. Like you said, drinking just never worked for me, thank goodness. Yeah. And so, you know, I started experimenting with cannabis, and I found that I really enjoyed the effects. I didn't know what I naturally or uh, necessarily enjoyed with it, but I knew that I enjoyed it, right? And so, around that same time, I had my first mortality crisis, mm. right? You know, when you're 18, you think you're going to live forever. And one day, I went to the bathroom and peed blood. And wow. was like, oh, yikes. And at this point, I wasn't the healthiest person. Like, you know, I was still eating junk food, uh, not drinking water, drinking soda, all these things, right? So on the way to the hospital, my dad, who he wasn't against cannabis, but he wasn't for it either. He was kind of just like, man, eh, just say no, you know, the Nancy Reagan approach. <laughs> and so- uh, Just say no to anything that might make you feel better. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, we're driving to the hospital and he's like, listen, I got to know, are you doing drugs? And I was like, no, but I'm interacting with a lot of cannabis. I said it differently. I'm smoking a shit ton of pot, right? Yeah. And so I saw him go like that. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting, right? And so he was like, okay, cool. We can work with that. So when we get to the hospital, I started showing him a lot of the uh, educational things I'd been learning, like the Dr. William Courtney um, documentary called Leaf about giving his patient THCA, uh -huh. basically raw leaves, and it putting all of your autoimmune disorders into remission. Whoa, things, wow, that's yeah, cool. I didn't an, know about that. It's an amazing documentary. My dad watched these videos with me. I'm laying in the hospital bed thinking I'm dying, right? And he's watching everything, and he had no cognitive dissonance over it. He was like, wow, I guess I was wrong. And he's like, hey, you're getting A's in school. You're showing up how you need to, you're fulfilling your responsibilities. Like you're an adult. If this is working for you, I don't want you on pharmaceuticals. So this is perfect, right? So from that point on, it became a co-creative relationship between him and I. Good. And so around the same time, this was about three, four years, at, about three years after the recession, right? That you talked about in 2008. Yeah. And so my dad's business had plundered. I mean, it just got destroyed and he was feeling a lot of stress. And so I was like, dad, you need a good hobby, right? And at this time I was starting to look into cultivating medical had passed. This is now 2012 and I was able to grow right legally. And so I had my medical card and I finally convinced him to get us a kit, right? And at this time he'd spend three grand on a $500 kit today, right? Yeah. With the grow light and everything. So we started cultivating and we sucked at it. Like it was, <laughs> it was terrible, right? Nothing that I would ever smoke. And so, uh, around the same time I went to the Boston freedom rally, which is like a big, you know, public disobedience, uh, uh, you know, example, basically where people get out into the green of the commons and they interact with cannabis. The cops are there. And as long as you're not doing anything crazy, they don't bother you. And so I forgot my sunglasses that day and I'm kind of walking around. I got blue eyes. I can barely see anything. And I hear this guy yelling, who wants to make butter with me? I'm like, well, I imagine he's talking about cannabis butter. I like cannabis butter. So I go over, I grab the pamphlet and it's New England Grasser Institute, right? Oh. And, and they're releasing this basic eight week semester on everything to do with cannabis. Mm. And I'm like, whoa, this is amazing. So I go home, I tell my dad, I'm a broke college student at the time. And he's like, do you want to do this? I'm like, yeah. And he didn't really have the money for it either, but he was like, I want to do this with you. And so he signed me up for the school and I made sure that I was the first one in, last one out every single time I was teacher's pet because I really, really started feeling intuitively. I wouldn't say it at that time, but feeling intuitively, this is right for me. 
And at this time I was going to school for psychology, realized I don't want to wear khakis every day in an office building, right? So yeah. I was like, that's not going to work. And I went down the rabbit hole. Mm. Like I got into everything with organic regenerative agriculture, um, you know, Korean natural farming, everything. And so we continued cultivating. And in 2014, I went to a music festival, interacted with my first other plant medicine, MDMA, oh, yeah. and uh, and felt this certain feeling when I was there that I couldn't put my feeling on, my my finger on. And when I got home, uh, it was I knew it was around my father. I didn't know what it was though. Uh -huh. And so when I got home, nine days later, he was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Oh wow! Yeah. And so through that time of being at the Grassroot Institute, I had seen patients that had cancer come in, have their scans of tumors, stage three, stage four, many different types, and then change their lifestyle, right? Start eating better, start drinking more water, start meditating, and also start interacting with a version of cannabis called full extract cannabis oil, right? which was killing their cancer cells. Yeah, And this was completely, I mean, this is really when I started to really go down the rabbit hole. Because I was like, how much do we no, don't, how much do we not know about this medicine? And so long story short, I ended up having the opportunity to help my dad through end of life with the medicine that we cultivated. So he passed away. Yeah. 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 Sorry and to hear that. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had, I, I was able to take the medicine that we cultivated together and turn it into FICO full extra cannabis oil and help him through end of life. He was supposed to have two and a half months to live by the time they figured this out that he was experiencing cancer. It was small cell very fast. And so he ended up lasting 11 and a half months total, did not choose to do chemo or radiation because he didn't want to change his lifestyle. He's like, listen, Ray, I want to drink Coca-Cola. I want to eat subs, right? And I was like, I'm going to love you for who you are, right? Yeah, good. And so I had that opportunity to, you know, help him through that stage. And so from there, my, my relationship with the plant deepened a lot, I right? Bet. Because it came very personal. And so from there, a few years later, I get into the professional industry up in Boston. Mm -hmm. The dispensaries were open then. Uh, we were the seventh dispensary open in the whole state. And this was on the East Coast. I mean, we were the first state to do it. So it was very revolutionary. Had a great time there. And then at a certain point, we got bought out by a corporate you know, entity. And uh, it started smelling like office supplies in there real fast, right? It was uh -huh. kind of like, it smells like reams of paper in here. I got to get out of here. Had a mini dark night of the soul. Like, I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life in this industry. What, what am I going to do now? And then it was actually through uh, another MDMA ceremony that I realized that I was abusing cannabis. Uh -huh. And this was huge to me because, again, I was checking off all the boxes. I was only using it once a day, all these things. And so through that experience, I took a long break from cannabis, began Highly Optimized, which is my company now, started the podcast, had no idea what I was going to do, and then began getting certified as a coach and all these different things. And then really that brings us up to the modern day where now I have this program, Connect With Cannabis, that because I've traversed these things, because I've seen the powers of the plant, and I've also gone through all the challenges that people are going through with anxiety, dependency, depression, this unawareness, right? Like the lack of awareness around these things. Because yeah. at the end of the day, what I made Connect With Cannabis to be is the long lost user manual for cannabis. Yeah, right? it's important. It's huge. You know, like I mentioned to you in the beginning, cannabis is a double-edged sword, but all, everything is. Absolutely. Sex is, money is, alcohol is, food is, relationships are, power, fame, <laughs> success, uh, you know, God. Yes. <laughs> it's because it's all d dealt with by mind. Yes. And mind is a duality until mm -hmm. you learn how to transcend the duality. But to, re to relate to the world, you have to learn to master the polarity of duality or complementary opposition. And I think that most people are in our culture are in a this for that orientation. If I have this wrong, I can do that. Mm. But they don't realize that if you're only doing that, but you're not doing the other things like looking at why you're in the situation you're in or what's making you sad or what are the challenges in your relationship, then you can use anything from gambling to sex to all these things we've been exercise, talking about as, right? as exercise yeah. as, as a vehicle of subversion, of, of distraction. Escapism. Escapism or numbing mm -hmm. or, you know, if you don't address the real issue at the unconscious level, it just percolates out of whatever other uh, vehicle or valve or, or passageway or orifice or chakra it can find its way out of. Mm -hmm. 
So you see people quit drinking, but they become workaholics, mm -hmm. or they quit smoking pot, but then they become exerciseaholics. Mm -hmm. So I, I think a course that really helps people understand the intimate nature of how to apply cannabis technology with awareness of what's going on in your life or your client's life or how to look at that person's profile and with your degree in psychology that gives you a lot of training in how to look at the psyche the soul of the individual you know that's what psychology is unfortunately most of it's not really very soul oriented it's <laughs> yes. behavioral modification which yes which is just you know the same shit don't do this do that <laughs> yes yeah, you know, it's it's really interesting too because, you know, what I found in working with over 9,000 patients, you know, face to face in the industry is that, you know, from the little old lady to the librarian to the doctor to the lawyer to the average person, everyone is interacting with cannabis, every type of person, right? But yet all of them, no matter how uneducated or educated they are, lack the awareness on many of the things we've talked about today. And then therefore it leads into, you know, their cannabis relationship, right? I mean, yeah. how you do anything is how you do everything, That's right? That's true, yes. Yeah, and so, yeah. you know, what I've found is that, you know, these people, in most cases, they they have the best of quote-unquote intentions, even though most cases they're not making an intention, but they, they want something better, right? They're curious, right? But they have no guidance. And, you know, one of the things that you supply the world, right, is that we have many elders, but not too many wise elders anymore. Yeah. And so really what we've lost in that is the ability for people like you or people like me or whoever to be able to help people with things like cannabis and go, hey, yeah, it's not bad or good. It's a tool, right? Yeah. But if you're trying to drive a screwdriver in with a hammer, it might not be the right tool, right? No, yeah. So have the awareness of when to choose this medicine, what it can do for you, but also understand the challenges that come along with it, right? Understand the fact that how you use it makes it what it is, yeah. right? It's big. 